Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is the City of Scranton and Berkheimer's uh, Payroll Preparation Tax Information Session. Um, so just a chance to um, kind of do a little overview of uh, the payroll prep tax, um, which we switched over to just this year. Um, and then also provide some kind of the nuts and bolts of filing um, and also provide a chance for generally pickable uh, questions and, and answers at the end. Um, so uh, we have with us today, um, I'm Andrew Cotillo. I'm the first assistant solicitor uh, in the law department here at the city of Scranton. Uh, we have my colleague, Matt Dominez, who is our um, uh, finance manager here at the city. And then we have uh, uh, Jim Hunt, who is our director of government relations over at Berkheimer, who is the third party vendor um, collecting the payroll preparation tax for the city of Scranton. Um, and then we have um, uh, Trisha, who you probably all know, who sent the invites out from Scranton OECD. So thank you, Trisha, for all your help in getting this together. Um, so I will turn it over to, to Jim to um, give a presentation. And afterwards, uh, we'll leave a little time to do some questions and answers. Uh, we don't expect the info session to go longer than 20, 30 minutes. Um, we know your time is valuable and, and you want to get back to doing business here in the city of Scranton. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, keep it short for you. Um, but as you go, if you want to put a question into the chat that if Jim discussed something that you felt like you kind of other people would be interested to know an answer to as well, um, feel free to do that as you go. And uh, we'll try to address uh, as many questions as we can towards the end. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Jim. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, the, the payroll preparation tax, as Andrew had pointed out, was implemented this year as of January 1st to replace the city's business privilege tax. And the basis for the payroll preparation tax is instead of being gross receipts, it is based upon the payroll that is generated by businesses um, which are domiciled and or operating within the city of Scranton and is on the same basis as what would be reported for earned income tax basis uh, for those businesses that are physically located in the city. And so, um, with the major difference between the business purge and um, the payroll preparation tax is unlike uh, the business privilege, this tax also applies to entities such as insurance companies, banks, manufacturers, and um, in those that are um, exempted from paying BPT taxes on their, uh, sorry, business purge taxes on their gross receipts. Uh, but it does in the, at the same time also exempt um, individuals who would be subject to the business privilege tax on rental income, which is reported on a Schedule E. Um, so, so, the base is, so if a business is located within the city, they should be reporting the same on the same income um, that they're reporting to us for earned income tax purposes. Uh, there is, and and there, there is no um, <clears throat> exclusions, uh, you know, any different than what would be uh, reported for wage taxes um, that are being paid to employees um, that are being operating or, you know, payrolls that are being paid for business being transacted uh, within the city. The tax also applies to individuals who are self-employed and are operating as uh, sole proprietors or um, Schedule C businesses. And the, the basis for the taxation of those entities is net profits and or the draws that the individual is taking against the um, gross receipts uh, being generated by, by, the, by the business. Um, in the case of uh, individuals who are sole proprietors, um, since in most cases you do not know what your net profits will be for the year, um, it should be based upon you be making estimated payments um, for in the first three quarters of 2022 based upon the net profits that were um, reported last year um, as part of your earned income tax filings. And in many cases, those earned income tax filings were not made in the city of um, not not always made in the city of Scranton. Um, it is possible for you to be operating a, as a sole proprietor uh, within the city uh, city, and be residing outside the city in a neighboring jurisdiction where you would have been reporting those net profits for earned income tax purposes um, under that jurisdiction. But you would be required to re 
pay and report for the payroll preparation tax um, to the city of Scranton. Um, so what, the, you know, individuals with net profits who would be estimating, you know, utilizing last year's net profit figure to uh, file on your quarterly basis, um, which would, you know, for the most part would be considered to be estimates. And then making your final payment with the fourth quarter of 2022, uh, which is due in 2023 to, to make up um, whatever that difference would be. Um, we will be you know, utilizing information uh, for employers uh, based upon the e earned income tax returns that are, are being filed with us. So uh, we're utilizing that information to do a cross check against what wages were reported as being paid in the city uh, versus what is, was paid um, and remitted for payroll preparation tax purposes. And the same will be true for self-employed individuals. You would be, when you're filing on your fourth quarter, um, you would be uh, required to provide uh, proof of what those net profits were for 2022 um, when you're filing for the fourth, fourth quarter. Um, and this, the payroll preparation tax, uh, unlike the business, well, like the business purge tax can also be applied to contractors that are coming in to work within the city. Um, it, contractors um, under a business purge tax would it be required to be have operated within the city for 15 or, or more consecutive business days. But the payroll preparation tax, that requirement does not exist. So if you are a contractor located outside the city and you are contracted to do work within the city, the basis for the tax that would be due to be paid on a quarterly basis would be the actual payroll of the employees that you're paying to provide to perform those services within the city. And those same requirements would, re, would also transfer to subcontractors. So if you're a large contractor uh, working within the city and doing work, you should be also notifying those subcontractors um, that you are hiring to do work for you, um, that they would have a liability um, for that tax and, and, and instructing them to register with us as the um, in payroll preparation tax uh, administrator uh, for the city of, of Scranton. And there are, are an, you know, a few ex exemptions um, under the payroll preparation tax where uh, certain types of businesses would be exempt from uh, payment of this tax. Uh, that would include nonprofits. Uh, but there is a caveat to that, that statement um, if a nonprofit is operating any for-profit operations within the city, um, the, the payroll that is being paid for those um, operations that are not under their uh, 501c or entity of purely public charity um, filing would have to be reported uh, on a quarterly basis and, re and remitted accordingly. And businesses, regardless of whether they have tax liability or not, are required um, by the city's ordinance and by state statute to file uh, a, a, court, a return um, on a quarterly basis. Um, so uh, if you are, uh, even if you are a nonprofit, you would be required to file at least uh, at the initial return, um, making that statement that you are a nonprofit and that you do, have, you do not have any tax liability. Um, we would at that point uh, be asking for you to supply uh, a copy of your um, certification from the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Department of Revenue that shows that you are indeed been deemed a uh, entity of purely public charity by, by the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. And at that point, your account would be closed and noted as such, and then further returns would not be expected from you unless we were notified of some type of change in that uh, designation, and then at which point we would you know, reactivate the account and uh, send you the appropriate notices. So it is important that, um, that all businesses are filing on a quarterly basis. The forms for 2022 uh, were sent out in March of this year. Uh, they included the four quarterly remittance stubs. 
as well as the letter of introduction. Um, if you are a business that is um, feels that it is not subject to the tax, um, you would be you would need to file a uh, exemption um, request form, um, which is available on our website. Um, and and complete that and return that to us so for a review. So, sorry. And it, you know so so individuals and um, businesses um, are, are required to file on a quarterly basis. Uh, but it, it, what if you are a, a Business that received a, a notification from us, a letter um, of introduction, as well as the returns, and you you are, are operating a rental as a that is oper, uh, that is being reported as a on a Schedule E. Um, that income of would be was formally taxable um, to the city for business privilege tax purposes, uh, but is no is not taxable to. At, under the payroll preparation tax. Um, Schedule E income is considered to be passive. Uh, passive income is not considered to be earned income um, under um, current uh, state definition. Um, so you would not be re you know, required to file and pay on, those, um, on that rental income that's being reported on Schedule E. But rental income that's being reported on a Schedule C or 1120, uh, which designates you as uh, operating uh, rentals as a form of business uh, would be taxable on the net profits uh, generated from from those two schedules. Uh, so you should be, if you are not taxable, um, completing the exemption form and returning that to us, so that we can note, uh, you know, update your account to show that you are no longer taxable. And doing so would eliminate you receiving uh, delinquent failure to file notices. Uh, which are sent out on a, on a, qu a quarterly basis. Uh, the first quarter failure to file notice went out in August of this year. And the second quarter failure to file notices will be going out within the next uh, week. Uh, so if you are in receipt of one of those forms and you are not taxable, um, you are encouraged to re respond to it because until you respond, uh, interest and penalty, um, continues to accrue on the payments that would be due on, for each of those quarters. And the quarterly due dates for earned for business, uh, sorry, for payroll preparation tax purposes are 30 days after the due date of the earned income tax filing that is due from employers or the uh, quarterly filing requirements that are due from self-employed individuals uh, for to report their net profits for that quarter. So the due dates for payroll preparation tax purposes are May 30th, August 30th, um, November 30th, and then uh, March 2nd. And that March 2nd um, is would be the fi final filing, the fourth quarter, um, which would be the for uh, self-employed individuals, the quarter uh, remittance that you would be utilizing to uh, ma make that final uh, reconciliation of, from your quarterly um, estimates that were made for the first, second, and third quarter. The tax rate in the city of uh, uh, Scranton is currently 2.78%, uh, which is would be applied to the um, net profits and or the uh, Wages paid um, to uh, by employers with, within within the, the city. So, for the most part, that is a general overview of the payroll preparation tax and the requirements uh, for to file. Um, uh, just to reiterate, um, you are required to file a return even if there is no uh, taxable liability, until which point your your business your account has been closed and shown as not being taxable, which at that point, the requirement to file quarterly would um, cease until we, in, unless, until which point we would find that there has been some change in, in, in uh, the way that your business is operating um, for, uh, 
business purposes within the city. And we are on a, a quarterly basis, well, actually on a monthly basis, receiving from the city a list of all the permits uh, that are being pulled by contractors. So that, that information is being utilized to augment the tax rolls. Um, so if you are a, a contractor or, or representing a contractor, is going to be coming in to do business within the city. Um, you will, they would be notified accordingly, uh, based upon that information is being supplied to us uh, by the city, and would be taxable on the payroll and or net profits generated um, for that work uh, performed uh, within the city. So, I do uh, thank you for your time, and if there's any questions, um, you know, on the tax. Um, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer them um, for you. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate you going through that detailed overview. Um, we'll uh, let folks start, you know, if anyone has any questions that they want to put in the chat that are kind of generally applicable, you think the, the group might um, benefit from, we'll, we'll pause and let those start coming, coming in. But I think um, uh, I'll start with some kind of frequently asked questions that I think I just want to emphasize for us here. Um, the, the first question is, when do when do penalty and interest start accruing for those folks who um, miss a quarterly deadline? Well, the interest and penalty begins to accrue as of the due date. Um, the city did extend the due date for the first quarter uh, from um, June 30th to July 30th. Uh, but as so interest and penalty for that first 30 days was not applied, but that that. Um, extension ended as of, of July 30th. So first quarter um, interest and penalty would be applied as of June 30th. The penalty and interest for the second quarter, um, which was due August 30th, uh, would be, begin to be applied at, at that point. And it's applied up to um, the filing date that the, re the return is received by us. Gotcha. Thanks. So just clarifying that it's, it's um, you know, important to make those quarterly returns. Um, otherwise, the penalty and interest is accruing um, rather than just waiting till kind of the end of the year to, to file a lump sum. Uh, otherwise, you'll find yourself having collected some, some penalty and interest. Yeah. Um, in regards to that, Andrew, if a business would file at, at the end of the year as one, one lump sum, we would be taking that, that filing, dividing the amount that was remitted by four. And, and applying the interest and penalty basis based upon whether, assuming that the amount that was paid would have been earned over four, four equal and qu quarterly installments. So, and, and billing accordingly. So another question that's come up that I think is, is helpful is um, Schedule E, right? You mentioned this, and the you know, and we have we have you know certainly a large number of uh, rental properties in the city of Scranton. So if uh, if uh, I'm a, if I have a rental property, um, what exactly does it you know what does Schedule E mean? Where's where does that phrase come from, and how do I know if I'm schedule if I'm Schedule E or not? Well, Schedule E um, is utilized by individuals that own property for rental purposes that are, are not actively participating in the operation of the business. They're, in most cases, Schedule E uh, rentals are purchased um, and the rents are collected or utilized to offset the cost of owning that property. Um, you're, you know, you're not... Um, in the business of operating um, and renting property as a business. Um, you're not, as I said, you're not actively participating in, you know, uh, the day-to-day -day operations of that rental. In most cases, you, you may have, um, you know, subcontracted out the management of that, of that property to a, a management company. Um, so you, you, what you're gaining from it is, is passive income. You're not, which means you're not actively participating within that business. Uh, so those individuals who are operating as a business who may have multiple uh, rental properties and are actually managing those properties and, and, and are involved in day-to-day -day operations of them would be filing as a Schedule C, which then uh, delineates you as, a, 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 as op you know, renting as a form of business. Thanks, Jim. Um, I think another question that comes up is from nonprofits um, who 
you know, right in the name, you know, nonprofit are used to kind of thinking of themselves as, as uh, exempt from certain taxes or exempt from certain tax requirements. Can you talk a little about if, if I'm a nonprofit um, and I've been getting letters from Berkheimer saying, hey, we've identified you as somebody who might owe the payroll prep tax. Um, what do I do to uh, make, come into compliance and make sure that I'm compliant with the payroll preparation tax requirement? Well, in that case, um, you would be, um, you would want to file an exemption, um, a request for exemption uh, form detailing why you feel you're not uh, taxable for that, um, for the payroll preparation tax. Um, it would be um, beneficial for you to at also at that point to include a copy of the certification of purely pu purely public um, charity that is issued by the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue to those individuals that have qualified um, for to be considered to be nonprofits. And the reason I say that is the um, the requirements to be considered a nonprofit in Pennsylvania are much stricter than those um, levied by the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, there's a number of um, uh, points that you must um, meet in order to gain that um, that designation from the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. In most cases, uh, that includes not, be, not being subject to Pennsylvania sales tax. Um, and that, that certification is normally good for two years and gets re, reissued um, by in, every, every two years, you have to reapply for it. Um, so with that information, we would then no note your account as being uh, a nonprofit and, um, and would not send you delinquent notices for failure to file because you've now shown that you are no, not a taxable entity um, at this time. Great. Um, we have another question that came in through the chat that I think we'll, we'll um, zoom out a little bit on. So hopefully that'll... Uh, answer the the, the um, question askers uh, question, but um, so how do you um, uh, how do you get a question answered if you're wondering if certain type of mo money is taxable under the program or if it's exempt? So, for example, if you have a certain kind of grant through uh, through the city, or if you have a certain kind of uh, you know, uh, how do you how are you how can you ask that question about your specific situation about whether or not it's uh, you know a certain amount of, of income or money that you've received is, is taxable under the payroll preparation tax? Well, if, if you go out to our website, there is a, a the ability for businesses to submit uh, questions to our, our business purge tax department, which um, the payroll preparation tax um, is um, uh, processed under. And th those individuals, uh, in most cases, those uh, questions are then forwarded to me uh, for re research and response. And I would be able to provide you with, with that with an answer to that question. Uh, Excellent, thank you. And so, yeah, so so for the uh, for folks who may have a specific question about that, we'll encourage you to go to the form just to make sure that you're getting you know accurate response about you know when when exactly what type of income it is and when you received it, and and uh, allow Jim the time to kind of make sure that uh, he can do the legwork and the research to make sure we get you the right answer. Um, so so appreciate that. Um, uh, next question we have is just to, uh, you know, there's there's uh, been a little bit of confusion because, right, we switched over from the business privilege tax to the payroll preparation tax. Um, but we are also uh, the city of Scranton is coterminous with the Scranton School District, um, which this year is uh, ha has retained the business privilege tax. So um, just to be to be sure, if if you pay your business privilege tax to this Scranton School District, um, but you are also uh, subject to the payroll preparation tax for the city of Scranton. Um, you have to pay those both, both separately, right? That is correct. And, and they are actually based upon two different um, classes of income. Uh, the business purge tax, which is currently filed, still being filed with the uh, Scranton School District, is based upon gro uh, gross receipts. So it's mm -hmm. gross receipts, um, you know, which are you do have no ability to exclude cost of doing business. Where the payroll preparation tax, if you are a business operating within the city, is based upon the payroll you're actually paying to your employees um, who are performing the duties um, that generate those same gross receipts. Um, if you are a self-employed individual, um, 
with if you're paying for business purge tax, it would be on your your gr gross receipts of operating the business uh, line one of your Schedule C or 1120 versus where the payroll preparation tax is actually on your net profits, which is the final number that you as a uh, sole proprietor would be reporting for earned income tax purposes in the county in which you, you reside in. Great. Thank you, Jim. Um, another question that came through the chat um, so uh, is about multiple offices. So if you have uh, an office in Scranton and an office outside of Scranton, what are some of the considerations about how exactly you would end up calculating your net income or what kind of, um, you know, how might that, uh, how might that play out? Well, if, in the case of a, a of an employer, um, it, it would the payroll that would be reported would be for the payroll for the physical location within within the city of uh, Scranton itself. And if you are reporting for an income tax purposes, you would already be reporting those payrolls separately because you are re required to remit earned income taxes based upon the physical location where that employee is located. In the case of a, a, a sole proprietor who may operate a business in um, both, let's say, the city of Scranton and in Dunmore, um, you would, and for net profits, you would be util, you would be you'd, utilizing a proration um, of by looking at the the amount of time you spend in each of those offices. So if you're 60% of your business is done in the city of Scranton and 40% is done in Dunmore, then you would be reporting on 60% of your net profits um, with, to the city. Um, and you would have, you know, would have to provide um, that calculation uh, when you filed your final return, um, showing why the net profit shown on your Schedule C um, is not what you, you filed on for uh, payroll preparation tax purposes. Great, thank you, Jim. Um, we'll have we'll do one last question, and then I think we'll we'll wrap up. And um, as mentioned, we put in the chat the link to be able to find the um, FAQs on Berkheimer's website, as well as some other the forms um, and a link to the contact us page. So if folks have additional questions, um, feel free to go through there. Um, and and often they end up on Jim's desk. So um, you know I'm sure he's he's been a great partner with the city so far. We've been meeting with him regularly, and 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 um, appreciate everything that Berkheimer's been doing. So. Um, uh, uh, so we will uh, do that. But uh, we have one last question that just came through that will say, um, uh, which is about partners in a partnership. Um, do you want to talk about kind of payroll preparation taxes applied to partnership, Jim, if that, come, if that uh, kind of jogs anything for you? Well, in, in the case of a partnership, um, a partner would be taxable on, for payroll preparation purposes on the portion of the net profits that are being attributed to them uh, from the partner. So if you had five partners within the, within the, a partnership within the city and they were equally sharing in a, a $100,000 worth of um, um, net profits, then each one of those um, individuals would be required to file and pay based upon the $20,000 uh, net profits that, that they received. Great, thank you, Jim. So that concludes, like we said, we wanted to keep it short and sweet for you all. We know we, we, we wanna you know, finish your lunch hour, get back to business. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and again, if you have any additional questions that, that contact us form through Berkheimer is your best bet. Um, and, uh, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all again in the future. So thanks so much for joining and have a great day, everyone. Good, thank you. Have a good day.